Hello there, and welcome to the tutorial. Um, this will also act as sort of a promo for YouTube and Facebook and stuff for this tutorial. Um, let me cover, first of all, a little bit about myself and why you should bother buying the tutorial. Um, this assumes that you already know um, at least the basics of Gaia and the basics of UE4. I'll be using UE4.22.1, which at the time of uh, recording this is the latest version. We'll be using the latest version of Gaia, Quixel Bridge and Quixel Mixer with a Megascans workflow. Tiny bit of Photoshop as well. Um, as well as being vaguely comfortable with Gaia and UE4, uh, you could also use this, the UE4 part of this tutorial, um, for a world machine type workflow as well. It would work equally as well. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, I've been in the 3D industry for over 25 years. It's easy to say what I haven't done than what I have. Um, I've worked as a senior environment artist at Rockstar Games, uh, at Rockstar North in Edinburgh, lead lighting artist at MPC in Montreal. I was a 3D supervisor on Last Days on Mars. Uh, I was responsible for the Jesse Owens digital double at the 2012 uh, Olympics in London. I'm an Autodesk master and was recently made a member of the Autodesk Expert Elite. I've worked and lectured all over the world. Who is this video for? It's for Gaia users, UE4 users, Terrain Arts, and people wanting to leverage Gaia in UE4 and have a workflow for not just the Gaia height maps, but various control maps that it produces. Now at the end, you'll have a number of functions that and the material or two that you'll be able to use in your own projects. Now the project files are supplied. Uh, the mega scans files that I'll be using, um, if I just open this under here and get rid of my camera temporarily, this stuff I can't pass over. Um, that is because that's owned by Quixel. However, what they have done is given me a link so that anybody who buys the tutorial gets uh, can sign up for a 30 day free trial should they not have an existing subscription. I will stick some other textures in with it that are, I, I know are free and I'm available to pass on, but it's not the textures that are the really important part, it's the actual workflow. Now I'll set the camera back on now. So what does it cover? Right, it covers creating the terrain and the maps, the control maps and height map in Gaia. Uh, I'll be using a 2K resolution for the height map that we use for this. It's quite a large area. Um, I didn't want to use a 4K mainly because as I'm doing the screen capture as well, um, it can lag the screen capture quite a bit. Um, what we're going to do is once we've created the terrain and maps in Gaia, we're then going to use Quixel Mixer and Quixel Bridge to create a free viz version and that will be used as our distance textures. Um, which again, if I quickly switch my camera off you can see over here uh, we have the, the distance textures that are used and we set up a distance shader for that now we're going to create the shader in stages so as well as important height map which to be honest is the easy bit we're going to be creating first of all a parallax occlusion shader with distance fade um, which is my preferred preferred way of working and then we'll be adding displacement to it as we have in this version here. To be honest, there's not a lot of visual difference between the displaced version and the parallax occlusion version uh, without displacement. Uh, the thing I don't like about using displacement, unless it's just for still shots or stuff like that, uh, is even though the wireframe tessellation near the camera is dense and not as dense far away, um, it does mean the shader is less optimized, so it's not one of my favorite ways of working. We're going to make sure that not only is the map controlled by Gaia, but can also be painted by hand. So let me show you, just demonstrate this. And if I go down here to my gravel layer, and we find a bit over here, and we'll say, oh, we want some more gravel. Da, 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 da. We say, oh, we want a bit more rock. Maybe we want a rock down here. You know, I'll put some rock over here, and then put some gravel around it. You know, like that. And maybe we say, well, there's one like, look at this stone here. That looks a bit out of place, so we can put a bit of, Sort of grass over the top and things like that that's the whole point of it um what is this video or not 
it is not a quick start video for Gaia or the Unreal Engine. That is a much bigger project if I was ever to do one than something like this. The video currently uh, runs at about four and a half hours. I finished it yesterday. There's about a month and a bit's worth of work in the preparation alone. Uh, I recorded it twice. Uh, the first time, you'll see now, it was the time you didn't know what it was saying, um, that I wasn't happy with the workflow itself. So I went back and I did it all again. Um, I take my tutorials very seriously and try to pass on the best information that I can. So uh, we'll also show you basic things like how you can get the third person bloaty here, you know what I mean? Wander around on top of things and run around the, the game and, you know, things like that. So there we go. And that's basically um, what we'll be covering in this. Uh, so if you want to know the sort of quicks and mixer workflow and the UE4 workflow, this will set in good stead. It doesn't show the creation of a landscape auto shader. I'm putting that out straight away because that is a further project further down the line uh, that I want to put in once uh, another particular feature arrives in Quixel later in the year. Now, I also am coached foliage, and the reason for that is very simple. If I add foliage to this, it will slow this scene down while I'm capturing it exponentially, and I will get drop frames and there'll be bits missing. Um, so, while that is a workflow to cover, uh, I would have to create a scene that was far more optimized for it than this. Because while it would work great for still images, it wouldn't work as well when you're wandering around. Uh, you know what I mean? So, I'm just quickly having a look at my what passes for a script to make sure I've not missed anything out. And I think I've covered it all, really. Um, what you will need to do when, I, when you get the project files is, first of all, you'll need to relink the textures in the shader. Because this is the moment it's covered... Uh, this is the instance shader, so all these textures like here, you need to relink to your own textures. Um, the other important thing is in um, your terrain, at the moment, the gravel and the rock are, cre uh, are controlled by masks that have came out of Gaia or have been using different maps of get from Gaia to a combine. I will supply those along the height map. You will need to relink them because these are currently from my documents folder and funnily enough that's not you know accessible from the internet so there's one there there's one on the rock one as well up here um you know and that space it should get you ready to go and up and running once you've made this shader you will be able to use it time and time and time again um you can add more layers there's no reason you can't i would advise not going too mad with it otherwise you'll end up with a shader so complex that it's not really gonna be suitable for a game unless somebody's got the most amazing rig in the world so there you go that's basically the tutorial i've spent the last month and a bit uh, planning and recording not once but twice so i hope you enjoy it i hope you find it of use um, and it will be one of the uh, you know the latest ones out there uh, those that don't know if you need an introduction to gaia there is gaia a practical guide that is available on gumroad uh, you can also get it direct from me as well if you ask very nicely and i might get a tiny bit of a reduction so enjoy and I'll see you all in the next video.